I have an EKG quiz for you. We have three EKGs. They're sneaky. They're rare. You're not going to see them every day, but I want to make sure you're ready if that sneaky EKG presents itself. So here's EKG number one. Ten seconds on the clock. Here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you get all three right? Do you get one of them wrong? Do you need extra help? Let me know down below in the comments where you're at so I can help you. Now here's our EKG. It is third degree heart block, complete heart block. Now here's why. Third degree heart block, also known as complete heart block, is the most serious and critical heart block there is. Because we have the top of the heart, the atria, and the bottom of the heart, the ventricles, they are not speaking to one another. So we don't have electrical conduction going down normally. We have a complete block at the AV node, the junction between the atria top of the heart and the ventricles, the bottom of the heart, which leads to this complete dis disassociation between the atria and ventricles, P waves and QRS. Now, how do we know we have a complete heart block? Well, what we're gonna see is we are gonna see dropped beats like we saw on the EKG and I'll put it up here to where we're talking about it. So we're gonna see dropped beats. But what else are we going to see? And by drop beats, what I'm saying is you're going to see no QRSs. You're going to see P waves and QRSs doing their own thing. So you'll see a P wave and there's no QRS. That's the definition of a block. But what makes it third degree? It is not longer, longer drops with the PR interval, like a second degree type one. And it's not the PRI of a second degree type two, which is a consistent PRI, but we're dropping beats. And obviously in first degree heart block, we're not dropping any beats. The PRI is just too long. So if it's not one of those three and we're dropping beats, meaning we have a P wave by itself with no QRS, then it's complete heart block. Remember, this is also gonna be slow because or dropping beats. That's complete heart block. Remember this EKG. How, what do we do and how do we fix it? Transcutaneous pacemaking, use your life pack and pace your patient. All right, EKG number two, 10 seconds, here we go. Remember, write in the comments down below. Let me know if you get these right or wrong. I'm here to help you and here we go. This EKG is atrial Fibrillation, AFib. Now let's explain why. Let's get into it. Now here is AFib, atrial fibrillation. I want you to think about it simply like this. Your patient's atria is not as strong as it once was. The pumping power of the atria, some call that the atrial kick, right? The pumping power of the atria is not as strong as it once was. What do we see? Well because we don't have a strong pumping atria, it's now weakened, we have these fibrillatory waves on EKG. The EKG itself is what we call irregularly irregular, meaning the EKG is irregular. It's not a regular pattern rhythm, as you can see on the EKG, but there's also no pattern to the irregularity. So it's irregularly irregular. That's another hallmark sign of AFib. The other hallmark sign, which you just got into a little earlier, was the fibrillatory waves in between. That's what makes it so irregular. It's chaotic. So it's irregularly irregular. There's no P wave that we can see. Basically, what we're seeing is fibrillatory waves, QRS. Fibrillatory waves, QRS, as you can see here. And there it is. One more note about AFib. You have controlled AFib, you have uncontrolled AFib or rapid AFib. If our rate, our ventricular rate is above 100, we would call that an uncontrolled or rapid AFib. The picture here obviously is of a, you know, quote unquote, normal AFib in the patient. It's not a rapid AFib, right? If we have a rapid AFib, the heart rate can be extremely high on the ventricular side. We can see a rapid AFib at 160, 180, 200. 
remember, we also want to think about if we see a very, very fast heart rate like an SBT and it's irregular, that may be a sneaky rapid AFib, right? So I'm going to think about, just remember, rapid AFib is when that AFib patient, they're going to call the ambulance because they're having symptoms, whereby if they have AFib, they're on medication, this and that, they may be less symptomatic. Hope that makes sense. Okay, here is EKG number three. Let me know down below in the comments. Did you get it right? Here we go. The answer is, it is a sinus rhythm with PVCs. Now, what is a PVC? What does that mean? Let's get into it. What a PVC is, it's a premature ventricular contraction. Simply put, the ventricle decides out of nowhere to step in and create a beat, create a contraction. So let's just say your patient is going around, normal size rhythm, no problem, and all of a sudden, an irritable focus in the ventricle aside, I'm gonna fire right now. That's a PVC. They're actually more common than you think. You may have actually felt it in your chest sometimes. You can even feel a PVC when it comes. Usually, not always, but usually, this can be from caffeine. So heavy amounts of caffeine can actually cause PVCs, right? Now, with PVCs, there is a single ectopic beat from an irritable ventricle, right? It's a wide QRS complex that interrupts the underlying rhythm. Now we got that. I wanna share with you a quick pearl about PVCs that you may pick up on, it's pretty cool. With PVCs, there is unifocal and multifocal. So the word unifocal, as far as PVCs, what this means is, it's the same type of irritable focus from the vegetables that's causing PVCs in your patient. And you just want to record the EKG and document it, of course. Not going to hurt to do a 12-lead EKG, of course. Or got them hooked up anyway. But unifocal means that it's the same type. It looks the same. Multifocal means the PVCs look different as they appear, meaning they're coming from a different source of the ventricle. Those are described as more sinister than unifocal. So watch out for those and let me know if you see one out in the field. I've actually created an entire EKG masterclass. In the first link in the description, this is what I give to all my students getting ready for paramedic school or advanced EMT school that wanna learn EKGs. Now in that masterclass, it is two hours and 40 minutes of material just on EKG interpretation, understanding basic EKGs. I go over every single rhythm in great detail. I show examples. I go through all of the electrical physiology, all of the anatomy that you need to know, every aspect of EKGs. And the reason I've done this is because so many students fail out of advanced EMT or paramedic school due to cardiology and EKGs. And I do not want that to be you. You get access to the entire presentation, the master class presentation. You get access to the EKG quiz to go over the material. And you also get access to all the slides. So all the slides are also included with the presentations. You have instant notes from me to you. It's the first link in the description down below. I look forward to your success.